streams up. And we're live. Hey, 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 we're live. And, uh, yeah. My name is Blades. Welcome to the stream. It's Amber Skies. Uh, this stream is brought to you by Amber Skies, which is the future of um, 3D networking. Yeah, that's what we're doing. And um, whereabouts are we up to? We're up to the stage now where I want to, to split down the entity. We have a color um, bit rendering that's working. Color uh, shader is working. So let's just check on that. Make sure what it's doing is correct. And just to prove that it's in 3D, I just asked it to spin around. There we go. That's what we have. We have a um, spinning square. Mm, yeah, great stuff. Mm. But you can see it's got an optical illusion on it, which is quite weird. I had to work out whether it was an optical illusion or whether it was a fault in the maths. And it's an optical illusion because of the colouring and everything else. There's no lighting there or anything to distance things. So, yeah. Hey-ho. <laughs> Quite weird, isn't it? A bit freaky. A bit freaky. It seems to circulate and turn at the same time. Well, it doesn't. It's actually fixed to a point. Um, you can prove it's an optical illusion by concentrating right in the middle. Let's see if I can do it myself. Right on the arrow. Just blur your eye. No, a bit more left. There it is. Nearly. Oh, it's still got a little bit of movement on the red out, red side. Alright, you've got to be dead centre. You've got to be staring dead centre to stop the optical illusion. You've got to blur your eyes slightly. And you'll see that it does actually stay still. Anyway. That's beside the point. That's a little trickery. Um, shows you how you can do um, illusions. You can create illusions uh, using OpenGL. And where's my coffee? <laughs> ah, bless. Let's go. Ah, I don't like that. I don't like it at all. All I did was I set up a float and... Um, one, two, three, zero, point three zeros, one F. <laughs> yeah. And then I just asked it to calculate the model matrix using that float. And then I just increased that float by one or point zero zero zero. Yeah, a lot of zeros and a one. It's in radians, not degrees as I thought. So, the bit that I was reading in the manual was wrong. It's definitely in radians, because there are two pi radians uh, for 360 degrees. And 2 pi is roughly about 6.28. Roughly, I say. Uh, but that's a number that will give you 360 degrees. So, there you go. I now know it's in radians. Good little test. And of course, very easy to achieve. <coughs> no problems with that. Now, what are we doing today? Yes, I, at the end of the last stream, I couldn't work out how to use my pen properly. So I spent a little bit of time this morning working out, to, out how to use my pen. <laughs> Can you believe that? I only, I, I, it came in Saturday, and I hadn't had a chance really to uh, mess about with it. So I got to scribbling <laughs> with our model and our entity that we did last time. Uh, I said that the model was going to be OpenGL and I've added a loader to that in case we need to load models and on the entity it was going to be a map for uh, model. So the entity is just going to be position, rotation, scale and ID. But as you can see that there is exactly the same as this here, position, rotation, and scale. So it's actually your calc model matrix is there. That is actually calc model matrix. 
So do we put that in here? Hmm. Also, there's no open gel in this. So the entity is an open gel. It's part of the world. And we we haven't even started on the world, have we? Well, I think it's about blooming time we did. As you can see, I was looking at the open gel side to create or load the data, pass the data to GFX card and receive IDs for the data, uh, which we store as a VAO texture, index count, maybe a name and a model ID. Not sure. Um, an enumeration type, maybe, for color texture, soft body, gas types. Because um, you've got soft body, you should really have solid body, and that wouldn't be a type. Yeah. That's a totally different set of calculations. And as soon as I wrote that in, I realized how bad this was going to be, and I put question marks up. So this is what I'm looking at at the moment. Uh, model, definitely 100% OpenGL. So we're going to put that in there. So entity.h and entity.cpp are going to be changed to model. In this case, it's going to be terrain model, not generic. Because this isn't going to include the loader part. It's just going to be the OpenGL part. Okay. I think I've got a plan. A plan is forming. Hmm. It also means that I should be able to get rid. Maybe. No, because I don't have a renderer yet. Oh, we've only just got a render scene, haven't we? Which is a function. We don't actually have a renderer. Uh, just checking. No, we don't even have a renderer. That's that's what we've got. We've got something in place of a renderer. So we're not going to be doing that yet. We'll we'll concentrate on the entity and get this sorted out first. Shaders are good. Colors are good. Uh, window 3D is good now. I'll check through all of this perspective stuff. And, yeah, 1.22, hmm, I think it should be 1, I mean, if we take it, <coughs> if we take this down to 1, okay, and we run that, I've asked for a bit more details down here as well, using the uh, tools options, I'll show you what I've done in a sec, Still got this hang up when it's compiling because it's doing this thing here, and it's it's rubbish. Okay, so with one, it's right. Ish. Is that what I would expect to see? Yes, it is. That's only one meter away and it's a one meter square. Is that how big I would think a one meter square would be at one meter away? Looking at my TV, yeah, it is. Yeah, because my TV is about one meter wide, isn't it? Yeah, okay. I'm quite happy with that number. <coughs> you can mess with it all you want. One radian is uh 360 oh that's the power washer outside 360 divided by 2 pi hmm that is um let me just do a quickie Oh no, I've got a calculator here, I have, haven't I? Uh, let's see if I can get a calculator. Ah, calculator, here we go. 
So here's a calculator. Um, so let me just get this in my head. 2 pi r equals 360 degrees. So it's 360 degrees divided by 2 pi, which is about 6.28, we'll call it. So 57 degrees is the angle up and down. You split that in half, that gives us 25. It isn't enough. So 1.22. That only gives us 25 plus 3. 28 degrees. So if I times that by 1.22, we're giving ourselves 33. 33 degrees up and 33 degrees down, that's a lot better. Yeah. Okay, that's a quick calculation. Um, uh, yeah, I will keep that at 1.22 then. Because that's one I came up with the, when messing about uh, that looked the best to me. So we'll keep that. Um, they're obvious what the defines are. But no, they're not, are they? So we're keeping those. Right, okay, let's get started. Let's get programming. What time are we on? Ah, oh, it's only been 13 minutes in. Anybody joined us? If you say, hey, why? Hey, hi. Uh, if there's anyone out there watching, I'll go hello and welcome. Uh, what we're doing today? Uh, today is the terrain model and terrain entity. Are we going to name them that? No. No, 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 no. We'll have terrain model and terrain. Because then we have to create the atlas. Yeah. Okay, under game, we can add a new folder at long last and call it world as well. Under world, I will add a new item. It's only going to be a header file. I'm, I'm going to call it entity actually. So it's going to be terrain. Entity. I'm happy with that in world. Yeah, I am. And under OpenGL, I need to rename these to Terrain Model. So, rename. There we go. And we'll just put in Terrain Model. And that will become terrain model as well. There we go. So the CPP file has to change straight away. All right, that's the first thing. We've called it entity entity. But it isn't anymore, is it? No. So we are going to have to do some modification here. Get rid of those. We don't care what we're doing in there at the moment. Oh. What? Oh, that's that one. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> so what we got here? Um, a class called Entity. Well, we can't have a class called Entity anymore because it isn't. So I'll click at the start of there and call it Terrain Entity. We'll take that and copy it. That's your class, public, entity. It isn't anymore. So we can paste that in. We can paste that in. Uh, where it says Entity, I'm going to call it Terrain. Uh, count Model Matrix, yeah, we'll keep that as it is. VAO Index Count, we'll keep as is, so we're happy there. 
Okay. Okay. I've just done it wrong. Yes, I have. Because it's model. Just realised by looking around the screen there that it wasn't the right notes. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Just starting, so I'm getting things wrong as usual. It wouldn't be a blade show without it. Uh, create terrain. Um, hmm. Model. Yeah, we'll call it that. Okay, under terrain model. Open gels, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Happy there. Uh, that changes, that changes. That changes. That changes, that changes, that changes. That changes. Don't know what's wrong there. Don't know what's wrong there yet. I'll get there in a minute. Okay. Okay, we're all right there. All right, let's just save that out. It's got red splotches everywhere, so that means I've probably missed something. Class, terrain model. Map four, yeah. Everything's okay here. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. What have I done wrong here? I know what I've done wrong. Dope. <laughs> there we go. We're working now. Just check through everything. Yeah, we're looking good. We're looking good. We'll save that out. So this is actually our model. Now, what is our model doing? Our model is creating the data and storing the VAO and the index count, which is exactly what we want to do, want it to do. The entity has to store all the other details uh, position, rotation and all the rest of it because what we've been doing at the moment here is calculating it on the fly so how have we been doing it here it should now be falling to pieces so yeah it is uh, So that's now a terrain model. That's fine. That's a terrain model, so that's fine. So everything's fantastic there. We only have to change a couple of things and our terrain comes back because it's all been uh, done the same way. So it's this calc model matrix business that's in the wrong place. We shouldn't be doing this to our model. Our model is static. It should not change. It should just be created and left. So the terrain model should be terrain, terrain. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. But now we need to actually create an instance of that model. Which means... We can add our model to some kind of storage. So we don't want to be really making our terrain model here at all, do we? We will for now. <coughs> we'll invent the storage and then we'll move it, I think. I think that's a better way of doing it. Yeah. Okay. But now I want to design the terrain entity. Hmm, this could be interesting. So let's get it. Everything's working there. Don't worry. You can. You, we can check it. 
Wish it wouldn't take so long on that compiling. Oh, that means it's going to have coffee if it's compiling. Why is it taking so long? There we go. Nothing's changed. All we've done is changed a name. Okay. That's the first thing. Get rid of entity out of OpenGL and get model started. Um, so I want a light model after this, don't I? Yes. Or is it a light entity? Hmm. There you go. So we're done with that bit for a second. Let's just get rid of this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do you want the open GL? So yeah, I want that bit open. So here we go. Paragma wants it's put it in for us. Ooh, that's nice. Very nice of it. So I'll get me usual to replace Pragma once. Oh, I'll just do up to there. Okay. As you might realize, I haven't put a CPP file here. Um, not even sure we need one. Because what I want to do is take something out of terrain model, which is the calculation bit. So I am going to take you three. Come with me, little ones. We've just taken a model matrix. We haven't actually stored the details, have we? Mm, not really, no. Okay. Hmm. A bit dodgy. Let's pop those in. I actually don't know what I'm going to need here. So let's just get my snipper up. Can I just put pop you up here for a sec? Oh no, not no no, don't do that. Don't Oh. Too late. Thank you. Just so I can see what I've got here. Um let's name space it up a second. Uh, yeah, okay. Namespace. Uh, game, isn't it, that we're using, is it? Yeah, game. Game is a project. Uh, namespace. And this is world. It's directory, so world. Uh, that's a world directory. Um, for now, I'm just going to put struct, and it's going to be terrain entity. Yeah. Which makes everything public. Because it's a storage class, really, isn't it? Okay, um... Yeah, okay. We can do it that way. GLM colon colon. Um Vec three. And the first one is going to be position. M member, isn't it? So it's Yeah. Position equals GLM colon colon. Vec three no point not f no point not f no point not f semicolon 
All right, so that's the first line. <laughs> I'm just wondering whether to split these down or what. Should really. All right, let's see what the next thing is. Uh, rotation. So I'll put in that in next. GLM. Vec3. And we'll call this M underscore rotation. And that equals GLM colon colon Vec3 0.0F comma 0.0F comma 0.0F again. And again, I'll just split it down to make it easy for me to notate it. Okay. What else do we need? Uh, we need a float for scale, M scale. Okay. And we need... Hmm... an int, an unsigned int. So an unsigned int for our m underscore model id. <laughs> will that do? Will that do? For now it will. I think as a starter I think that's okay. I do want it to have a function, don't I? Yes, I do. I want to take that function out of here. So it's model matrix, isn't it? So what I'm looking to do is take that line there. We can then cut that out. We still need GL and MAT4. So cut. And we can paste that in here. So there's that, which also takes with it that. Remember I made it public. Well, it doesn't matter in a struct, does it? So we haven't got that. Uh, we can cut that out. And put that just above. here. Um, I'll make this into an area for functions. Uh, yeah. For now. Well, I've not decided on the whether to fully class this or not. Uh, so that's okay. That becomes a function. Should I therefore have a CPP file. Yes, really, I should. Let's be honest about it. I don't like doing that. If I'm doing a maths library, then yeah, fine. I'd do static in line and put that there. I don't want this to be static and I don't want it to be in line. I want this to be a separate thing. So no, I don't like that. Hmm. Bad. Okay. Uh, let's think through it. For starters, uh, I've just wrecked that. So let's see what we've got left. We still have nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, I think we might be able to get rid of these three. Includes, which would be awesome if we can. That no longer exists. But it does tell me what it should be. 
So hold your horses and cut that out of there. Pop that in here. Good um, model ID uh, equals zero. Okay, yeah, we've got everything has got an equal sign on it. Good. I need to initialize everything. If I don't, I'll, I'll be uh, wasting everybody's time. Okay, initializations are looking good. Uh, we are going to add new item, and this time we'll have a CPP file. source please uh, terrain entity there we go we are cooking now yeah and that will have whatever I have here Ching. copy you over Space, ka ching, uh, hash include. We shall have a terrain entity dot h, and then we'll have the name spaces, which are uh, game and world. Lovely. Game goes in. World can go in. I'm going to create a world. Yes. Indeedy. <coughs> and I think terrain is probably one of the most important things we could be looking at. Uh, for that kind of thing. So what do we have? We have you. Little marker. So that's just been popped in there. That's fantastic. So we can have that. And if we go back to this CPP, I can now get rid of that line there. Take off uh, the comma and go down. We should have some red squigglies after this bit. Here it all is. Yeah, so all I've got to do really is take the contents out of there. So cut you lot. And under terrain CPP here. Uh, oh, whoops, put it at the beginning. Highlight and V. That'll do it all for me. Correct, correct. We've now got a model matrix. And it's part of terrain entity. That is fantastic. We could actually put that into a maths helper class. Like a utility class. So we don't have to keep repeating this code in every single entity. Then it will become in line. Interesting. But for a second, let's just finish off this. Make sure we finish up here so we do that lovely I've got three dotted lines make sure they all line up they do so now all we have is create yeah that's good that is good so the model creates a model and the entity holds its all its positional style data okay terrain yeah don't need model anymore models complete for now save that out now we should have a terrain entity i'm still n concerned about this being here because it's made this into more than a header file. 
it's also aggregated complexity into it which we possibly don't need hmm okay where's my coffee so we've now created two new files yeah that was quick now how these files work is a little bit simplistic really Hmm. Okay. I don't want to extend the program too far. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll just be sat here rewriting the program forever. So what we need to do now is make that work within game. Okay. That's fine. Are those files okay? Yes, they are. Uh, terrain model dot h doesn't have these in anymore, does it? Easy way to find out. You just do that. Anything come up in red? Nope. Anything can come up in red here? Nope. That's looking a bit better actually now in here. That's looking a lot better. All we need is a loader program placed in there and we have the final model.cpp. Interesting. Okay, yeah, we're fine with that. Those three lines can disappear. Yeah, exactly. OpenGL is only in here, it's not in the entity. That is great stuff. So we now have an N-Terrain entity as a struct. So here, what we would do is we would... You see it doesn't work anymore. So here, uh, we would have a vector of n well no we could only set up a terrain entity hmm <laughs> would terrain entity be any entity can that be generic hate to say it, but it looks as though the answer is yes. That is generic. There's nothing in there that says it has to be terrain. Position, rotation, scale, model. No, it doesn't have to be terrain. Could be any entity, that. I don't like this. We can calculate that. Where? The point is, where do we calculate this? I can push that off to the renderer so easily. Should it be prepared and calculated first? How often is it going to run? For a terrain entity once. No, it's not. It's going to run multiple times. It's going to run for each one meter square in the world. Hmm. Okay, I know what I know what to do. I know what to do. I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to leave it as is, uh, unless it becomes a problem now. So, what are we going to do? We are going to create a variable. 
Um, what have we got here? Hmm. Have I got anything in here that might help? No, nope, here. Not really. We haven't exactly messed about with stuff, have we? Shaders, I think we did. Just looking at the includes, I'm, I'm, I always look at the includes before committing to something. Go on, I'll have you. You're useful. Okay. We're not adding more and more includes. We're not bloating the software. We're trying to pick includes that I've already got. Okay, that's in game, isn't it? Okay. Um I'll pop you in there. <laughs> and we'll add our world, I think. Include. Okay, this is only testing stuff, so don't worry. Uh, can we have world, please? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We'll have you. So we can now have a terrain entity. I've added in a vector, so we can have a vector of terrain entities. That's interesting. So what I would like to do is hold terrain not in what I call local memory or chip memory or CPU memory. I haven't to talked about this at all really, have I? There's two, two types of memory that we're working with. One is the memory with the CPU, which is called a heap. Um, I call it close memory or restricted memory, I suppose, because it is. I think that my CPU has about two megabytes. I'm not sure. I, I Don't quote me on that. I don't know the CPU setup on this one. On the old one, it was easy. It was about two megabytes. On this one, it'll probably be something completely different. Um, but beyond that, you've got your computer's memory, the main memory. I've got about, what, 32 gigabytes of that of chips chucked in here. So I've got a lot to play with. So I've got a lot more memory to play with as machine memory than the couple of megabytes or whatever that I have in chip memory and everything that we have done so far is in chip memory uh, anything that uses pointers is in computer memory and we haven't used pointers a lot I've done that on purpose again uh, it keeps it fast it just keeps us the program at speed fast I don't know if you played with uh, that last piece of code from the previous episode and you started you know making it move or anything and then tried moving it around because there is something that quite a quite a strange effect that happens if you do it but we'll see that later we'll see that later ah let's have a look we now have a terrain what can our terrain do well our terrain model I think it does it automatically anyway. Creates a terrain. And destroys a terrain. And allows us to get a couple of pieces. So yes, it creates and destroys a terrain. That's all it does. So that's all automatic. I'm happy with that. So what I do now is I create a vector of models. Okay. So that would be std colon colon vector and we will call this one this is why I'm hesitating um, I don't need a vector of terrain models do I?
Hmm. This is awkward. Because I was relying on that. You see, it doesn't look right. It's terrain, model, star. And then, mm, well, terrain models. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Hmm. <laughs> So that's what the line should look like. Hmm. The idea that model would then be zero. Okay. We could then store it by putting, uh, yeah, there might be some extra, yes, okay, I'm happy now. Terrain, models, um, it would be dot, pushback, open brackets, we would put a uh, new, and it would be game, come on, colon. Open GL and that's a terrain model. And we would just does it need anything? Oh a name. Uh okay. There we go, as we had before, so it would look something like that. That would die there. Because you can see why I didn't have any notes on it now. Because I was going to change it. Um, let's push back. With the terrain. Like that. And terrain model is an actual thing. What else would we need? Uh, we would need a vector of um, entities. This is going to get really bad, isn't it? STD, colon, colon, vector. Open brackets. And we would have a game, colon, colon, world. Colon, colon, terrain, entity, star. And that would be... Terrain entities. Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And this here, this terrain calc model thing, is now an entity. So I would take uh, terrain entities. Yeah, this is working in my head now. Good. Uh, I would now take uh, terrain entities dot pushback open brackets a new game world. Whoops, do it properly. World. Terrain entity, open brackets, ah, it doesn't take anything in, of course, okay, is that a terrain entity, terrain entity, do we want it to take in all this information, I think I do. Oh, that means making a constructor. I haven't made a constructor. Hmm. 
If I make a constructor, I've got to take all these equal signs off. Um, choices. Choices of ways of doing things. And this is the beauty of C++, is you can have... It, it's a bit of a multiple choice thing. Uh, does it matter? Hmm. Not particularly at this point in time, but it might do later on. We have to set all of these individually. Actually, that's not too bad. I mean, let's look at that properly. Um, hmm. Come here, you. I mean, what we really got? We'll just push back the terrain entity. So really, what you're looking at here is terrain entities. Terrain entities and then zero arrow um, we can do position <laughs> equals you. Semicolon. So I'm just going to write them in first and then I'll uh, sort it out after. Next thing we want is a rotation. So, uh, terrain entities again. Again, it's the first item. So we would have M underscore rotation. And that would equal that line there. I'm going to keep everything together on that line there because that line there is an awkward one. I need that. To be radians, please. At the moment, just a note to myself. Yes, we are going to be taking that out of a uh, terrain model. Sorry, terrain entity. And we are going to have a mathematical utilities function. I've just realised why. It's okay, it's because these are in radians and I want them in degrees. Okay. In radians, okay. Ah, I haven't got a doobry there, that's why it's messing me about. Thank you. Terrain entities. I'm doing them all on purpose to see exactly how much of a mess we're making. And I'm doing it on purpose. Uh, next one along is scale. We're going to leave that at the default 1.0f. Uh, then we will have terrain entities. Uh, zero. We'll have the model. So model ID. Um, oops, my bad. Ouch. Um, equals zero because that's in the zeroth position on the other bit, as it were. And M model matrix. So let's put that in next. That will be. Hmm. How do we do this? It's going to be terrain. Hmm. Terrain entity is zero. Uh, we'll do that. Calculate model matrix. 
Oh, just disappeared on me. Thanks. Uh, calculate model matrix, and there's a load of stuff that goes in there, of course. <laughs> Semicolon. That's bad. Because then you'd be repeating everything out here. Because it's how we've done it so far. So that's everything out of there. Let's pop that back to something normal. <laughs> So, th <laughs> that's just ridiculous. Uh, you wouldn't do it like that. You just calculate the model matrix. Okay. Okay. We, we, we've got count model matrix wrong. If it's, if it's going to be here, it can't be like that. Position, rotation, and scale. Go away. <laughs> You're not going to be helpful. Uh, here. You guys, you're just not going to be helpful. <laughs> uh, it's going to be M position. M rotation, M rotation, M rotation, M scale, M scale, badly typed M rotation. <laughs> oh, bless. M scale, and model magic cycle translate. Okay, you're fixed. You're fixed. You're fixed. We've now got nothing in there that works. Thank God. All right. Right. So we've now got that as the kind of setup: <laughs> position, rotation, scale, model ID, and calc. Lovely. So that is no longer needed. Remember, I've got to produce the same program. So I've used a couple of pushbacks into a couple of vectors. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to call this now a uh, terrain test. Because that's what it's becoming. Because I need a camera now. Um, terrain test comes down here. Uh, that printf is broken, so I can get rid of that one. And we can get rid of that line. It's unneeded stuff. I'll keep the shader ones going. Coming down here. Okay, this is where the fun starts. Get a VAO will be under terrain model. Oh, that one there. That will be paste. It will be... Um, No, that's wrong. This is the whole point of it. Oh, wow. It isn't, because we don't want to be using the models now in the render renderer. What, what I want to do is I want to use the entities. Uh, because there can be a lot more entities than there can be models, as you're about to find out. We're going to produce about 100 of them. Yeah. Entities. Right, so get VAO is what I'm after. Just put space there a minute. So it'll be zero. 
our first entity. That will give us a model ID. Okay, so that will give us then the terrain model. Put brackets, square brackets around that. That's a number. If you look at that there, it's an unsigned int going into terrain models. Whatever that model ID is, it will go in here. And now we can pull a VAO out of it which is by that way. Get VAO. It's fine. And that's how you join up terrain entities with your models. Now that is interesting because that means we can register a map of these. We haven't used maps yet. So index count and model matrix, well model matrix isn't there anymore, is it? It's in there. Okay, let's take you, copy. Let's pop you here. You hold that information. There. You hold that information in the terrain still, in the, in the model. So we'll need the arrow as well. Copy. You see how everything's now getting a little bit more complicated? We started with something very basic and we're now making it more useful uh, because what we can now do is something called batch rendering because we can put these into batches. Our window perspective is still the same. But all of these models and stuff are now out, because we use the word new, go out into our computer's larger memory and don't stick around at the chip. Uh, for quick access. So that's another bonus. Because as I was about to say, I'm going to have about a, you know. So all I need here to mess about with the rotation now is to change the rotation and then recalculate the matrix. So to change the rotation is that one. Just borrow you a minute. So that's a calculation. So there's y, comes through with point one, gets calculated, and then hits this. So all we need to do at this point here is that and for the rotation put y is that correct yeah y in radians uh, so that matches up with that that matches up with it we set the rotation and then we just do that line there for the rest of it And that replaces that. You see, we don't need to affect its uh, position. Oh, position minus one, I haven't put it in, have I? Yes, I have. Okay, that's fine. Lovely. So that now replaces what I had before. And as you can already see, it may look a bit more squiggly there, but look how we're handling it. It's a lot better. No, don't split those down because it's a complete thing. 
that's looking better, that line's looking better. I don't split those down because it's a complete thing. I can still split it down to, yeah, I could do position, and then you can see it properly. I could do it that way. Let's see what it looks like. Like that. Actually, I like it. Yeah, I like it. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going to do that there, I should do it here. Okay. Right. So I can annotate it. That is lovely. Oh, I'm going to celebrate with a Coke. Oh, wow. That is brilliant. I think I prefer that. Uh, build a solution, please, Bob. And it hangs into compiling. Yeah. It takes about 12 seconds, which is ridiculous. Oh, no, it succeeded. One warnings. Yeah, PDB. Yeah, that's okay. I know about that one. And oh look, it still works. Okay, so I've got less messages here, but I don't really want those messages. I don't want the OpenGL version, possibly a shader program ID. But it still works. But it's just getting its information differently. And um, because of that, it means that we can utilize that information differently. And this is where it all starts working out. Whoa, 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 that is bubbly. Whoa there, Neddy. There we go, that's better. Nice black bubbly burpy liquid. Yum, 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 yum. I'm going to enjoy this. So, I've got the same program as I had before. Effectively. But now we have this stuff here. That's different. And this is a big thing because we now have it split so that we can work on the OpenGL side without interfering with the entity side. Uh, it means that's the front end, that's the back end. So you'll hear about people working on the front end or the back end code. And somebody would be working with this code, somebody would be working with this code, and it wouldn't interfere. Unless you re removed the light position, then that would interfere a lot, obviously. But this data is all separate to this data. The only thing, the only thing that actually comes, pulls them together, is model ID. It's that one there. That's the only thing that I used to pull it all together. And that was used in do stuff. So model ID there. So I used it to get hold of. So I went through to the back code to get the VAO and the index count. So people can work on the, the back end code quite happily. And it'll never affect where things are placed on the screen, where where they're orientated, or anything like that. Because all of that is held in the terrain entities. And the terrain entities just links through back to the model. It also makes it very easy to change your model by model number. So if summer went to winter and the ground was snowy or changed to a snow type model, just change your model. 
and you can do that independently of the front end and where it's placed. You can just start loading up a different model. Hmm. Damn, that's good. <coughs> so that is the purpose of adding complexity. And the complexity that we've added is now that we've got all of this uh, stuff to do here. But hold on a minute. Its position, its rotation, scale won't change. The model ID won't change. Hold on a minute. Those two are going to be the same. Uh, that's going to be the same. The only thing that's going to change on here is position. Let's make a hundred of them. <laughs> Let's make a hundred of these. Yeah. Where are we going to put them? So first of all, let's design my... Uh, no, I want a camera. Okay, let's get a camera. Where can we get a camera from? Um, well, we could get a camera from terrain models. No, we can't. Because of the camera is completely different, of course. Um, where can we place the camera? I would put it with display. Yeah. What I'm thinking is the camera holds the view not the model matrix, it's going to hold the view matrix. Okay. And display holds perspective. So we could have the camera hold perspective and view. Hmm. No need. Why complicate? Okay, let's have a camera. I'm going to put it in... with any other entities. I think I'm going to put all our entities in here. Yeah. So it's going to be the same kind of setup. World. Add. New item. Add a file. Camera 3D. Was it is. <laughs> and dot H. Yep, okay. That'll do me. So from... Just knock these out of the way for a minute. Here to here, copy. So that is now camera three D I H. Bing. One two one. V. Happy about that. Let's also make add new item. CPP file again camera three D. Big D at the end, why not? And that will be blob birdie, blob birdie, uh, hash, include. There we go. And that's going to be namespace game. Okay, what? Namespace world isn't it it's going to be our world camera 
You can have different types of cameras, by the way. Uh, so that's okay. Add a space. Double it down. Dump. Copy. And the camera's gone over here. Thanks. Just give you a second. Pragma once. There we go, we'll pop it all the way down there. What do we need for a camera? Exactly the same as what we needed for a terrain. Oops, wrong one. Terrain. So I will take uh, U3. And put you in camera.h. Paste them in. Um, we call terrain.h a struct. So I think we're going to do the same here. Yeah, we are. And we need all of that information there will give us a starting point so we may as well just copy it out and lost myself on the headed so struct camera 3d I'm sure I've made a mistake here somewhere oh no it does it for me semicolon at the end I thought I'd forgotten it totally so it's going to have a position, it's going to have a rotation, it's scaling? Uh, nah. I'll hold out on that one. Uh, model? Nah, I think I'll uh, hold out on that one. And... If you're doing a first person shooter, it can be a model ID it would be the avatar, wouldn't it? Mm, think about that later. It's no longer the model matrix, it's now the view matrix, which is different to a model matrix. V-I-E-W. And that becomes V-I-E-W. So calc view matrix, yes. We'll have you. So position, rotation, and view matrix. Is that all I need? For now, yeah. Okay. I'll do. Oof. Let's see now what we need. We need a camera, don't we? Uh, right. How to create a view matrix. I'm going to do this uh, a simpler way, I think. Because it's backwards. It's backwards to what we did for model matrix. Because we're going, f we, instead of putting our model into the world, we're now working on a view from the model back to the camera. And it's because we're coming back to the camera that it works. Yeah. Uh, let's try this out in a second once I can get all this lot saved. Save you, please. Do I need anything else? Probably not. Um, let's just save you, pop you here. Did it not do it? Oh. Have I spelled something wrong? What the heck is it doing? It doesn't know what it's doing, does it? Hmm. I do. So stuff it. 
C A M E R A C A M E R A C P P I what Uh, that's not what I wanted at all. Okay. <sighs> Game. I am not used to Visual Studio. Can you tell? <laughs> I'm used to working with Linux that just does what I ask it to. <laughs> I'm not I'm not used to things being so mm, helpful. So that's void. Uh that is camera three D. Colon colon. And can we just do that please? Thanks. Thanks a bundle. It's it's it tried to be helpful, I know. I know. So I'm not gonna shout at it yet. Does it again now? I might just. Because now I've got to copy this over. Pop it there. That'll do. Save. Let's get on with it. Grief. Right. Uh, GLM. This is how I prefer to do my uh, view matri matrices. I don't know how GLM prefers to do it, but this will do me map 4. Get you out of the way. And all I'm going to do is make a uniform matrix. So it's matrix 1.0F. So just make a normal one, shall we? Yeah, that'll do. Now, matrix... Is it times? I don't know if we've got the shorthand, have we? Don't know. Times equals, and it will be GLM colon colon, and for views it's rotate first. So rotate. Oh, just realised it's not star times. It's equals in this one, isn't it? Rotate. It's not coming up. Why not? GLM. Colon, colon. R. O. T. Rotate. Open brackets. Tell me what you want. You want my matrix. Okay. And to act upon. Uh, you want the angle, which will be m underscore rotation dot x. That's the angle, and of course, glm. Oops, m colon colon vec three. We want it on the x-axis, so that's a 1. I haven't mentioned this really too much, this l this line. Um, I'm thinking of going over all of these now, because of that. Because that's a rotate. That's the actual definition of something, so I'll pop that as a definition. So that's rotate x. I'm going to notate this one. Y and Z. Uh, that's Y and Z. That's we're going to rotate about that axis, and on this one, we want to rotate about the z axis. 
Okay, so that's your rotations, your three rotations. That's good. And now we just need the translation. Um, so it's just the position of the camera, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, matrix colon colon and it's translate. No. Matrix equals GLM colon colon translate. Not transpose, translate. Open brackets. It wants our matrix as the first parameter to work upon. And it's just a const GLM vec3 three floats as a vector address. Okay. Which is M underscore uh, position, isn't it? Is that all it needs? Yeah? We're happy with this? Yeah, we're looking happy. What do we call our variables here? M dot underscore view matrix. Yeah, yeah there's, there's not much to it really. That's it. Yeah, so there's just that translate. Oh, shocker, I did it again. Let me just make sure I did the same way in terrain entity but in reverse. So first we translate. by the position and then we do the rotations x y z. I wonder if we're supposed to do z y x on the camera. That could be interesting. I'm going to try that. See if it comes out any better. Or any different. So what I'm going to do is z y x on here. Z one and zero. Does it matter which way we are and we do things? Well, if it comes up with a strange result, we know yes it does. <laughs> <laughs> I like to experiment and just mix things up on the fly. So there we go, that's that. Okay, we need to start slowing down because we're making files upon files, which I am going to keep. Maybe not like this though, so I'll decide after today, and I think tomorrow or Thursday I'll go through and do all the annotations. Do I like what I've got? Void calc matrix. Okay. How many times do I need to do that? Just the once. We're not going to be moving the camera at this point, are we? No. <laughs> okay. So how would we deal with that one? It's a bit more... S well, it, it's practically a lot simpler than the terrain because it doesn't have a model. Um, back over in game, we would include it. World, and now we've got a camera 3D. Yay! So let's set up a camera. I'll do it after terrain. Alright, let's do our camera in here. <coughs> Camera is in a world, so let's set up a camera. Uh, camera 3D, and I'm just going to call it camera. Nearly. Doesn't take anything, so just camera, that'll do. We are then going to set its position and rotation. So camera dot 
position equals a GLM colon colon vec3 open brackets I'm going to put it a 1 to the right so that's 1 in the x direction I'm going to put it uh, 1.0 f up in the y direction wrong 2 2 in the y and so that's x y z direction I'll pull one back one out of the screen towards us so it's positive okay so that's what position we're going to hold for that <laughs> Camera um, dot rotation. I don't know how to do the rotations on this at all because I haven't programmed it in properly for my style of doing it. So it's going to be a VEC3 and it's in radians. Yay, don't you just love radians? Is it point A or point 0.7? So in the X, which would be tilting downwards, I'm going to go with 0.7F. In the Y, Y direction is straight up, so that would be right to left panning, or whatever you want to call it. Right to left yaw, or something. Um, again, I want about 45 degrees donor, so again, let's go 0.7 uh, of a radian, make it float, does help. And in the Z direction, straight towards us, mm, that's roll, isn't it? I don't want anything. Okay, let's see if that kind of thing will work. Once we've done that, uh, we've set everything up. So all we ask the camera to do now is to uh, calculate the view matrix. There we go. <laughs> now, we've got model matrix and we've got perspective. So let's add another one to our renderer. We've got a view matrix now. Yay! Which means we can move move uh, the camera around. Ah, right. Let's see how we do this. It's uh, the renderer, isn't it? Oh, no. Let's start with OpenGLS at GLSL. Let's get the vertex up here. So, and I'll have in the uniform. Uniform mat 4 going to be a uniform and this is going to be the view matrix and what we're going to do is we're going to take that and just slide it in between the other two so there I'll do there we go so we've got model view projection perspective in our case but projection MVP um, so I've got all of that in. That will now place everything in the right place from there. But we could, we've got this we can now use. So back in game, we'll just save you a second. Because our renderer now can play with a new thingy. Do I need to add anything here? We'll do in a minute. Render. Where are we doing our uniforms? U1, U3. Here we go. U1, U3. So it's quite obvious what I'm going to do. Copy you. So over in our renderer, we'll have U2. <laughs> yeah. Okay, get your guitars out. Uh, get your little, 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 and now I want the right name. 
So copy and paste. So that's now correct. And that means we can now do that. Copy and paste. We change that value to a U2. And we change that to view. V R E W, please. Which we don't have, of course. becomes a view. Just do that. Copy and render a H. Paste. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. Except for our game who is now unhappy because he's wrong. So what we need to add here is our camera and it's just dot view matrix comma that's it. Lovely. We'll pop you in there camera I think we've now covered nearly everything. Uh, I haven't done reflectivity, I know, but I always, I will do it. I'll do reflections and stuff afterwards because we haven't got a light yet. We've nearly covered everything. We've got a camera, we've got a model, so we've got nearly lights, camera, action, but not quite. Just check your renderer. That I've set you two correctly. Yeah, and view. Zero, zero. That's correct. Lovely. That render is rubbish, but it should work. Now, what do we expect to get? I've placed the camera up and a bit back and to the right. And I'm trying to point it down towards the object, so we should be looking down upon it from about a 45 degree view. Should be. <laughs> Uh, I'll just do a build, thank you. Build again, thank you. Let's see what comes up with this. Oh. It nearly worked. <laughs> but not quite. which I was um, expecting, to be quite honest with you. Because I'm not sure <laughs> if our view matrix is correct. And I can't really print it out, can I? There's no easy way to detect that. Mm. There is. Calculate view matrix. So camera has a view matrix. Let's just have a look at you. Point 0.7 x, y. Ah, it's got dotted on the end. Ah. Okay. Right, okay. Need to do a test. Need to test. I'm quite certain that that nearly looks right. Hmm. 
Okay. Um... All right, let's test position first. Let's get a picture on screen first before you start messing around with that. Because if you don't point your camera in the right direction, actually, I think I've just made a capital mistake here. I think I have. Let's have a look at the dot calculation <laughs> hmm interesting XRS what is it on about I don't know. Hmm. Okay, we'll let that roll. Continue. Right, so our camera's not our camera itself isn't messing anything up. <laughs> what I need to do now is to go away from the object by a good distance, so that is into the positive Z. And if we can't see anything at that point, I think I know what's going on. <laughs> God help me. Uh, we can take that off now. I know what's going on. So the positive Z, we can change our position. I'll go 5 to make sure we can still see it. So 5 away from it, backwards. Uh, out of the screen comes our camera. It should go into the distance. And as expected, we get that. Let's go minus. And yeah, it works. Thought so. <laughs> the camera works in reverse for a model. So if I bring that back into uh, minus one, say, um, and we go up, let's just go up one and to the right one. Let's give it all the ones, but without minus on it. Let's see what we get. Sorry, I haven't finished that bit. Never mind. <sighs> Now, that isn't what I've asked it to do. X, Y, and Z are working in reverse. So that's positioning the model, not the camera. We have to rever reverse all of our translations. Right, so keep that picture in your mind. That should be down here, by the way. So what I've done is I've made a mistake on the calculations for the camera. Where I've done the translation, it should be minus position. Now let's see what happens. Oh, wait a minute, I've still got that minus on it, haven't I? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Good. We can't see anything, which is what I expected. That's very good. <laughs> I know it's bad, isn't it, when you want to actually get an empty screen. So now we can get back to a positive one. Coming out of the screen, and we get... the expected picture. <laughs> Excellent. Now let's see if our rotations work. Um, so that's working. That's down there. So I want to rotate around about the Y a small amount. 
in fact a very small amount, so if that's the middle of the screen, I want to go around the Y by about, that's halfway isn't it, um, let's try point 0.4. Maybe even point 0.5. 45 degrees is 2.5 degrees, one eighth. It's 0.25. Okay, let's go with 0.25s. So I want to go around by 0.25 to the left. It should be that way. God, I hope this works and doesn't go the wrong way. Let's just do that one first. It should turn left. It's a right-handed coordinate system. And it's gone right. I don't believe that. So everything should be... What my, the expected result was that. which was bringing it more towards the centre. 0.25 is actually not a bad guess. 0.33 maybe. Anyway, that means that these are the wrong way round. When I ask it to go to the left, it doesn't. Uh, so, camera. CPP, come here. Our rotations are the wrong way around. So we have to put a minus sign in all of, in front of all of these as well. There we go. Everything's backwards on a camera. Because then you've got to get it back to forward. So you go, you calculate it backwards and then minus it to become forwards again. Oh god, never mind. One of these days I'll try and explain it properly. So now, plus 33 should bring it roughly towards the centre. Because it's in radians, isn't it? And that's correct. So if I want to dip the camera I want it to go in the, this is where we're going to get it wrong by the way, e the across x nose down, yeah, so this is where the fun starts. So I will call it point 0.4 for now, because I, I want to try and make it more evident if I can. And then I've got to try and explain what we're doing. This is going to be hell on wheels to do. Yeah, as expected. <laughs> hmm. Didn't really work, did it? <laughs> well, actually, I think it has. think it's actually done what I've asked it to. Let's just bring me down on the Y so you can see it. I think I saw it that time. Just come down to halfway. You can see that it's slanted. It, the camera has tilted that way. Yeah. 
because we set these like this. Uh, yeah. Ain't gonna work. Because we're giving it two. It's going to turn and tilt. Because it's not relying on its own axis, that's why. You see, the axis here isn't, is, uh, we are, well, the X is coming somewhere through here. Uh, the Y is somewhere over um, there. And Z is, God knows. God knows where Z is, it's up here somewhere. Uh, <laughs> so I think we should have done point 0.4 on the Z, actually. To prove the point doesn't do the right thing. It's counterintuitive. See this one. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Look at the direction of rotation. It's totally tilted the world. And this is bad news. Because what you have to do is separate rotations or a rotation system that allows the camera to stay the right way up. You see, a lot of people give you this as an example uh, of how to move the camera around. What they do is they put this mathematical genius view in and then say, well, you can do that, 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 you can move using your character keys going in and out of the screen, the left and right, and all the rest of it. Well, I was, I was thinking of doing that and then realized I'd be telling you lies because it don't work like that. Because what you're actually doing is you're only using the camera in that direction and that direction, but separately. We there's no. It, it's hard to explain because if you go left and right at 45 degree angle, you should be turning left and right, but also rotating the world around an, an, a second axis at the same time. You'd be rotating around two axes. So that's what you've got to be aware of. If that was 0 0.4, 0 0.4, the angle of rotation, well, yeah. Hmm, it's not going to give the right angles of rotation. That's okay to store things in, but it's not good to calculate it the way I've done it. I think that's what I'm trying to say. But at least we have it. We do have a camera. Which is good. So we need to work on the camera. Which is why I'm, I'm going to put in... Using multiple um, axes at same time gives additional world rotating effects so we need, I need to sit down and sort, sort out my equations because those equations are wrong you can't just reverse. Uh, I mean, people will say that the view matrix is just the reverse of the model matrix. Um, up to a point it is, yeah, but with models, you're not usually rotating them around more than one axis. Unless it's something like a flying bird, and then that's a totally different story. But what I've actually got here isn't right and that's why we've got this kind of weird effect going on 
Well, actually, I might be able to show it you. Yes, yes, I might be able to show it you. Come back to game, yeah. What, what we're going to have to work on to get this right. And it comes down to... Right, let's just pop our camera back. Camera go down back to zero, please. Zero you out. Oh, that went the wrong way. Never mind. We jump. Uh, so that's all zeroed out. Right, that's positioned perfectly. But now what I'm going to do is... Uh, let's see, X. Yeah, we'll do both. X and Y. All I have to do is that to show it. I can do all three actually, but that gets complicated. What you would expect here is for it to go around like that at 45 degrees. Around an axis at 45 degrees. Because we, we think of it in two dimensions because this TV screen is in two dimensions. Um, but yeah, what's going to happen... This one I like. There we go. Follow that point there. The green edge. So it comes around on that 45 degree. And then it skews. And goes somewhere else. And then comes back on itself maybe. Yeah, just about come back up that 45. The red edge is possibly funny as well. That's a bit, That does the opposite to the green edge I guess. The blue edge, what's that one doing? I'm glad I did them all in colours now. But you can see that that is definitely warping. It's not doing what I'm asking it to do. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. So the equations are wrong. It doesn't use a localised um, axis to do its rotations. Or the second part of the rotation. Which is interesting. <laughs> so I don't know how I'm going to fix that yet. <laughs> but I will. But now you can see that it's all working. We've got a camera. Um, and I think we need to talk about, well, everything that I've wanted to do today, really, I've done. Um, so all of this lot is now done. There's a couple of ideas there to mess around with. Uh, there's a couple of things here that you might want to think about. Texture ID. Uh, model ID is taken care of. But yeah, we could have added texture ID in there. And then well, we've got index count, haven't we? Got all of that fixed. Um, all unsafe changes. Ah, cancel. Save, 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 save. I want to keep that. Thank you. Alright, that's that done. So I've split it into two things, which has now enabled us to add a very, very nice camera uh, with wrong mathematics. I need to get the right mathematics out because that is lousy. I wouldn't mind, but I did have that mathematics written down at one point. I think I have actually lost it. But hey ho, we don't mind. We'll just do it again. We'll do it again. It's quite interesting. Um, if anybody out there does have the answer to the maths problem that I've just posed, which is called localizing axes, I guess. I'm not sure what you call it. Um... Uh, it'd be rotating around a localised axis. It's the only way I can really think of it. But I'll check that through. I will check that through. There are things that I can do. 
Uh, here we go. That's what I'm looking for. Does it have anything on here? Nope. Oh dear. Never mind. So. Looking good. Looking good. I think I might just leave it here for today. And go and spend the rest of my time looking at equations. Um, unless anybody's got an idea. <laughs> quickly. <laughs> um... Because the next part of this is we are going to pl uh, place our terrain model, finally. Um, which is going to be interesting in itself. Because for that I need to move this camera. And to move the camera I would really prefer the correct equations. So I'm going to go off hunting those uh, without the correct equations. I, I can't see how I can judge the angles. <laughs> I mean, they're already in radians at the moment, which I don't like. We'll do a radians converter very quickly. Um, but I think that's going to be about it. Yeah. Actually, I'm starting to like what I'm seeing. So, in the meantime, um, on our game, there you go, there's the thing that turns it all around and you can see that if you do it on all three of it it's a right mess <laughs> but there you go. that's the equations that we're using we are using a right mess this has got too big and we've got too many includes in it so we now have to start thinking about mm -hmm, an application maybe yeah starting to design an application maybe adding Corrections, yeah, adding the light. We still haven't got the light. Uh, okay. Tomorrow we'll be getting this working the way it should do and adding the light. I think we're up to the stage where we can do the light. I mean, what have we got in our fragment shader? Oh, wow. Yeah, we can add light easily to that. We have everything we need here. We've even got the outs for our normals. That has to change. Did we normalize? Yes, we did. That's good. And we've now got the position correct except for the view matrix. Excellent. I'm happy. I'm actually happy about that. That's a good place to be. I mean, there's enough there uh, to start yourself a career in... Uh, 3D graphical programming. <laughs> Literally, there is enough material here to do anything you want with 3D. Uh, the lighting equation, yeah, stop by tomorrow for the lighting equation if you want on the shaders. Um, but all it will be now doing is I've got to do the background maths. Otherwise, nothing will work at all in the end. So I shall catch you anon, which is tomorrow. I'll be streaming probably from about um, 12 o'clock onwards or so, uh, British time. I think it's British summer time at the moment here. Um, so wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I would like you all to take care and have fun. <laughs>